teeth. So get a witch to soul on a broomstick you can crawl on. We're gonna play a call on the Adams family. <laughs> The engines were finding life difficult. Workmen were mending the viaduct on the main line. The arches needed strengthening. Sir Topham Hatt did not want to close the railway while the work was done, and so repairs took a long time. The engines had to take great care when crossing the viaduct, and the delay often made them late on their journey to the junction, where they knew Thomas would be ready to collect his passengers. Thomas grew crosser and crosser. Time's time, he grumbled. Why should I keep my passengers waiting while Henry and James dawdle about all day on viaducts? Don't you blame me. If we hurry across the viaduct, the whole bridge will collapse. Then there will be no passengers. What next, hmm? Run my train on time for one thing, retorted Thomas. He hurried away before Henry could answer. Bertie was impatient too. He was timed to arrive just after Thomas. His passengers found that instead of going straight from the bus to their train, they were kept waiting till Thomas arrived. Soon Bertie grew cross with Thomas. Let's again, he remarked as Thomas panted wearily in. We may be French, but I thought you could go fast, chumish. It's shame we had another race. I bet I can beat you now. Thomas let off steam loudly. Rabbit! He hissed fiercely. It's those mainline engines. They dither about on the viaduct, and they blame Sir Topham Hatt's workmen. It's just an excuse for laziness if you ask me. One day, James was later than ever at the junction. I'm sorry, Thomas. He puffed. I was held up at the station at the viaduct made it worse. It's lucky for you I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Before James could answer, he puffed importantly away. Come along, come along, he panted to the coaches. Annie and Clarabelle did their best, but Thomas soon found that he couldn't save much time. Suddenly, Thomas saw Bertie ahead. His radiator was steaming. What's the matter? asked Thomas. You should be at the station by now. You're late. I feel dreadful, moaned Bertie. All upset inside, and driver says he can't make me better. Thank goodness you're late too. Can you take my passengers, please? They'll never get home otherwise. Of course, agreed Thomas. He now felt sorry for Bertie, and promised to get help at the next station. Thomas set off again. Already he felt much more cheerful, and Bertie's passengers 
traveling in Annie and Clarabelle, all reached home safely. When Bertie was better, he came to thank Thomas. I'm sure I cheesed you about being late. That's all right, replied Thomas. I'm glad I could help. There are times when being late isn't such a bad thing after all. With a last cheerful greeting, the two friends went back to work. <laughs>